Well, thank you all for being here. It's, uh, I guess, a different time to the day now I've seen where everyone's from. And again, I'm always amazed by the, the global nature of these things and how really the work that we do touches beyond international boundaries. It touches beyond the types of organisational sectors that we're in, whether it be anything from banking, government, charity work, retail, pharmaceuticals. Every one of those businesses has people at its heart and um tonight speaks very much to that and i've known uh, both carl and haffer this is me doing introduction hat uh, on mm. uh, so uh, i've I'll, I'll start with you haffer i've known you the longest in fact it's been so long now i can't e i've even lost in the midst of time we've done so much together so haffer mm -hmm. has been uh, talking about the people side of things has always been uh, someone both in person and online who has just always brought that energy of facilitation that people power enthusiasm and just holds that space so very well so we're very lucky to have Hapa here today one of the things that Hapa has brought is this incredible professional online uh, which you also have a course uh, Hapa uh, which is about uh, online presentations and uh, uh, it is amazing uh, so luckily we've got Hafa with all of his expertise here uh, and he has lent a hand to bringing this game which Carl has uh, created and uh, I was very fortunate enough to play in person in London and so it's, uh, it's a highly creative, engaging, fun game which teaches you loads of stuff which we'll soon figure out what that is. And so Carl has brought this and uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure when we met either Carl, it was lost in the midst of time. But uh, again, every interaction, again, has that seed of enthusiasm, power and people goodness about it. And it's an absolute pleasure to have you here as well. And so I am absolutely fascinated to see these two incredible people team up and provide us with uh, this experience tonight. Um, and they've both asked me just to mention that uh, this is the first time this has been run online. So this is us in a safe yeah. space in our lovely uh, community to see how this gets transferred from something that's worked incredibly well in multiple uh, times now. We've, we've played this in person in the room, but now we get to see it uh, with all of its glory online. So welcome to the two of you. Uh, welcome all of you. Um, so thank you for setting this up. I shall now step back and hand over to the both of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, it was interesting because as you were talking, um, I, I've met Carl not so long ago, uh, but we immediately clicked. And I don't know if it's because we share uh, interests or because our energy is somewhat similar, um, but we just started co-creating stuff. And I think this is the third project that we already started mm. and more uh, will be coming along the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and it was kind of like a challenge that I threw to to Carl because he he hosted this uh now that I have the feedback of the actual participants, an amazing meetup in Bristol, uh where I would love to go one day, not only to be able to attend uh an in-person version of of Carl's games, but because I know there is a surf pool over there. So I really want to go to Bristol one day, but I could not be there. And I said, hey, I'm pretty sure not only myself, but a lot of people in the world would love to play this game. So let's transfer to the online world and see how it will go. So in the, in the real spirit of, of agility, this is, let's say, the sprint uh, one slash MVP first uh, delivery of what we produced and we're going to try to to do our best but let's consider that life itself is not perfect like for example i wasn't planning to have my older daughter climbing on top of me while i was doing this intro but hey we need to accept what life throws at us and just inspect and adapt okay do you want to say hello to us don't you see Okay, Franz is also saying hello to you all. So this is what is going to happen. We are going to play together, hopefully learn from not only the constraints or limitations that may appear in our uh, online 
uh, dynamic. But hopefully, more importantly, we're going to learn from what happened in the game experience. Because Carl is not only a, a game uh, master or a game uh, aficionado and connoisseur, um, he also believes in the power of learning through play, which is another thing we have in common. I learned this from expressive arts therapy, the postgrad that I did. Um, there is a lot of play involved. So with, with this game, Carl, I'm going to let you introduce briefly uh, the game uh, in a moment, tries to simulate the constraints or the moments or the limitations that we face in reality, especially when we talk about teamwork. Isn't that right? So this is what we also hope to learn from. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Hafa, and thank you, Simon, for such wonderful introductions. So this game, what is it? It is Agile Animalia, which is a cooperative mega game of cross-team agility. And we chose a zoo as a theme because not too many of us have direct experience launching a zoo and probably fewer ever doing a virtual zoo. So it's an opportunity for us to play a game over a number of rounds and experience what an experiment-based approach to change is and looks like and feels like and a reflect on what do we learn along the way and what can we reuse back in our professional careers as well. So I think at this point I'll drop in the link to our mural board so you can start having a look around and seeing what to expect. And I'll also share my screen. So if I spotlight myself at this point, or have I got the spotlight on? Alpha, sorry. Is it, I'm, I'm a big screen already. Yeah, okay, cool, thanks, actually. In that case, I can just go straight to showing my screen. So you're welcome to come onto the board and follow me directly or just check out my screen space. And let's have a talk about our zoo. So the role play, right? So the scenario, we've got this nice big patch of land. I think it's Simon's back garden. If I have uh, got my Google spying software all set up correctly. <laughs> um, we've got one building, we've got a nice car park, and we've got this lovely green space with a lovely brook running down the middle. Um, what we put into our zoo is going to be based on what our customers are telling us, what we believe is going to be valuable for uh, people to come and experience. And it's up to us to find the right animals, to acquire them, to build the right enclosures and space, and to talk about the zoo in terms of how we want to market it, and help raise education and deliver some premium experiences along the way. So basically, how do we maximize the value of this space by developing a zoo? We're gonna start off with a number of different teams. How we end up is going to be based on our collective decision-making. So we're gonna play a game over three rounds. Well, the intention right is three rounds. We'll see how we do and how much fun we have talking about the reflections and like debrief along the way. Um, but free is the intention. And let's have a look. So we're going to have a number of different teams. And in a moment, you'll get to choose which team you want to play in, maybe based on some of the style and some of the experiences of that game. So we're going to have an architecture and maps team that is going to help manage that space that we were just looking at. They're responsible for making sure that we understand which enclosures are going to go where and make sure that the zoo is like laid out in an effective way. We're going to have an education team whose mission is to make sure that we've got this great educational program so that for every animal that we have, we have a good educational experience to support it. No zoo is going to work without good marketing and sales, right, Ashley? So we're also going to have a team whose mission it is to raise the awareness of the zoo. We're going to have a premium experiences team who are going to design a nice creative program of experiences, you know, like pet a, pet a crocodile or you know, uh, cuddle, a, cuddle an alligator, however you want to think about it, that's up to you as a team to design uh, the most most interesting premium experiences you can. Then, of course, no zoo works without animals, so we'll have an animal acquisition team. Your job is going to be to source, locate, find, and bring the animals into the zoo. But they're going to need somewhere to live, so that's the animal enclosures team's job. So they're going to be responsible for establishing the right spaces in our zoo, like the right perimeter, the right size, so that we don't have too many elephants in shoeboxes, right? That's going to be your responsibility. We'll have a habitat team to make sure that each of these enclosures are as interesting and safe for our animals to live within. And then a human team. We were calling this a human resources team, but it's quite nice to have an animal team and a human team. So this is a group of people who are going to help 
make sure that we have the right resourcing and supportive learning and professional development that's going to allow our animals to be safe, live happy and effective lives. And for us as people who manage the zoo to do so as well. How does that sound? Okay, so first job for everyone here is to go and add your name to the team that you would like to go and join. So you'll see a bunch of different sticky notes. Try not to add sticky notes to start with. We've got 31 people, and I think there's more sticky notes than that. So go and just indicate which team would you like to join. Just go put your name. This is going to allow Haffa to start creating some breakout rooms in the background. So each, each of our rounds, we're going to have a chance to break out as a team and start developing our content. I'll give you a minute to, right. to do that. I'll also field questions, yeah. by the way, if there's anything which is um, clearly confusing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say that um, while I manually add the the people to their rooms, you can swiftly talk about the um, even the learnings that we had during this the preparation of this. Um, game mm. crawl and the fact that we had to postpone because there was there were problems yeah. with mural last week yeah that was unfortunate um from a, like a learning perspective um we played this game in person first and foremost we played it again in bath a couple of companies have played it by the way if you're interested in running this game in person or online we do have a way for you to get hold of all of the rules and content it's on the brighter work website we can put the link into the the chat as we go um but but significantly, the idea of this game was to create a, a maximize like in person re uh, in like experience and make the I guess like the way of in interaction as easy as possible. So we had lots of paper and pens, low fidelity artifacts. We could have all of the like the the value of having space. So we could where, where do we position our teams to like enable collaboration to like experience what it means to be in a collaborative environment. So online, we have to think about how we transition into some of that space and perhaps how do we adapt some of the mechanics that still allow for the same learning experience while also having to think about, well, what adaptations do we need to make based on the fact that we are using an online tool and what limitations might people have, like accessing a computer that has certain applications blocked. So we try to keep the experience as native as possible within the tool. So things like dice don't work uh, necessarily for everyone. So what alternative mechanisms can we use? which I'm going to use as a segue into talking about the animal acquisitions team and how they connect to some of the other teams, just so that that element is understood by everyone. And then for others, we'll, we'll explore. And then we'll get, into, we'll get into the play very, very soon as well. Has anyone, who, anyone been unable to join the board or add their name to a team who just wants a shout out for help before we move forward? Cool. Okay, good. Let's move forwards until until we find that we hit and, block. Yeah. Uh, now it's good to ask if anyone does not have a team yet and it's still considering what are the possibilities. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. Zach, you're saying you're having to observe because you can't get into Mural. However, we'll make sure that you're a part of some of the collective decision making that occurs in our like product review and retrospectives. Exactly. Yeah. So the animal right. acquisition. Okay. Sorry. Have a different. Sorry. Sorry, me, Carl. So I believe I have assigned most of the people who have names on a sticky note, but there are many more who are not assigned to anything. So are these people just going to be uh, observers or they are still figuring out what they want to do in, in terms of team-wise? Let me give an example. So we have uh, Jude, uh, Maruwan, Patty, Paul, uh, Svetlana, Mia, Alexander, who are not on any team that I can see, or maybe it's just me. I don't know, Alexander, you are on the, just said, marketing promotions. Perfect. Observing, by the Perfect. way, is totally fine if you wish to. That's, Sorry, I uh, only yeah. just joined. I was late. So can I just join any team I like? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. I'll do that. Um, I'm Thank on the phone, so I find it really hard to access the mural and everything. I'm, I'm traveling, so... Mm -hmm. 
Uh, is that possible for you to just add me to any team just to get an experience? Definitely. So we have one understaffed team, which is the Habitat team or the Premium Experiences team. Which one would you like to go? What does the Habitat team do? I, I really don't mind. Uh, anything well, would so be in Habitat yeah. teams can be quite <laughs> exactly. creative, so it might be difficult on a mural board um, without, without the board. Okay. Maybe the uh, other one, the premium experience. experiences would work yeah, well. Premium experiences, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because if, even if it's that team, you can't access the board. We can at least talk about what you plan to do, and that'd be absolutely fine as well. So that sounds like right. it would work. I'm trying to contribute as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you good. Very much. Thank you. This is good. Anyway, it's good. It goes back to the idea of like, how do we adapt for online and different people's like access points? So very welcome. Thank you. Cool. You. After you found no, your I have, child, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she just felt that she also, when I started talking about animals and zoos and, and cute things, I think she just wanted to see what we were doing. All right. I'm going to, or I'm ready to open the rooms, Mr. Carl before Rogers. We, we can also yeah, we open do, the rooms yeah. and see what happens next with people who are still here. Yeah, let me just give a quick rundown of the animal acquisition team, because I think that's probably the most complex space, just to make sure we've got an understanding there and help a couple of the other teams understand how they interact. But part of the first round is also going to be just working some of this out, right? So let's have a quick run through. Effectively, like this animal acquisition team, your job is going to be to source the animals that our customers are most interested into this zoo. So let's let's figure out what our customers want. Um, I'll invite. Can someone shout out a number between one and four, please? Three. Three. Okay. So our customers are interested in animals from South America. Can I have a number between one and four. One. One. Okay. And they're also interested in animals that are cute. So cute animals from South America are going to score well in this round. Okay. And lastly, one more number between one and four. Two. I heard four first, so I'm going to go for that. But thank you very <laughs> much. And also Australia and Oceania. So our customers are like, yes, cute animals from South America and Australia. Thank you very much. So our animal acquisitions team, you're going to be thinking, well, what cute animals do you know from those spaces, right? And of course, Wikipedia is your friend. And in fact each animal will have a different conservation status, right? So if you look at Wikipedia, for example, if you look at a, a giant panda, they're vulnerable, right? And you'll also score more points for the rarer the animal or the more difficult it is to find that animal than in the wild. So if you go and fill the zoo full of squirrels, well, that could be interesting, but we're probably not going to score many points. However, if you were to go and get a number of um, extinct in the wild animals that are also cute from South America and Australia, we're going to be scoring more points. So the higher the conservation status. However, it's quite hard. Like we're a new zoo, we're a new bunch of people, we're still learning how to do this. Actually going and getting those critically endangered, extinct in the wild and endangered animals is going to be difficult. And to represent that, we're going to give you this 10 by 10 grid of kind of like memory cards. So anyone who has got kids who plays like those memory games, this is going to be that. So you have three choices or three options each round or each round that you're trying to get an animal to get the maximum, um, the highest endangered level you can do. So for example, here's my mini grid of four, but you're going to have a 10 by 10. And as a team, you can reveal one of these cards and it says, aha, you've got one conservation point. So you can go and get yourself an animal of least concern. There you are. You've got your squirrel guaranteed, right? So now you can go and draw a picture or find a picture of a squirrel, however you want to do it. But you might go, do you know what, There, that's not going to get as many points. Let's try again. Let's see if we can find a rarer animal. Oh, no, no luck that time, right? So there's quite a few conservation points one, right? Let's try one final time. Aha, there we go. We've got ourselves uh, a endangered animal, right? So it's worth four points. So now we can go and find ourselves an endangered animal. So you're going to have this push your luck mechanic. And you can do that three times to choose the rarest animal, like try and find like the rarest or the highest rar rarity animal you can do. Then you can go and source it. And there you are. So half has added our first 10 by 10 grid. And 
will allow you to hold up to three animals in pens. So it could be you've got a really rare pigeon that has been coming across from, uh, let's say, South America, and it's on the transatlantic, but at the end of the round, it hasn't quite made it to a zoo. It's okay, you can store it in your holding pen. It might be that you have another animal that you're looking for. You've got a low, least concern animal. You stick it there, and then you're trying your luck again to try and get yourself a endangered animal from Australia. I don't know how endangered kangaroos are. Probably not that endangered, but you can stick it into holding pen free. And the final time that you've run out of like all your holding pens are, are full, you need to go and make sure you're getting your animals into the zoo. This is where you're going to go and work with the enclosure team. So as an enclosure team, you get to decide, well, what is the right size enclosure for your animal? So we know we've got ourselves a kangaroo coming. Well, what makes sense in terms of how large an enclosure do we have? That's for you to figure out and to talk to the acquisitions team. And where you put it, well, you have to go and talk to the architecture and maps teams. They're the team who are responsible for designing where things go. So you need to go talk to the acquisitions team and to the architecture team. And that will give you an empty enclosure with a kangaroo. But we have an animal welfare officer in Simon Powers who really cares about making sure that each of our animals have valuable and calm and considered and safe places to live. So that is up to the habitat team to make sure that you have an appropriate enclosure for the animals. So you will need to go and talk to your friends and your colleagues in the other teams. Now, I'm not going to go through the other teams because if you ever joined a company who's pointed you to like the organizational wiki, like, oh, everything you need to know about starting a job is on the wiki, go read that, okay? That's what we're going to do. So if you are in the premium experiences marketing team, HR team, you will find instructions just around the board. So there's the premium experiences team, human team, et cetera. Go find your space, read your instructions. We're going to play for eight minutes and then we're going to have a review about our zoo and we're going to score round one. Any critical questions before we start? And if you're confused, maybe that's part of the design. That's the great thing about this game. We can just uh, blame it on the design. So, okay. Uh, question. Uh, yes, everyone, please. Yeah. So everyone can start independently of uh, the other teams? Yep. So we're going to put every, each team will go into their own group. And you can start thinking about how you want to strategize and deliver as your individual team. And then we'll come back after eight minutes. Okay. I have some questions regarding Habitat team, but, but maybe you can join the the room to yep. clarify. If you, uh, yeah. If you ever need to talk to another team and you find you can't, me and Hafa will be here in the main room and we will act like a switchboard for you. Okay. okay cool. That was my question. Yep. Thanks. Excellent. That was a good one to re uh, resolve. So thank you, Nelson, for your sweat, Lana. <laughs> right, exactly. Evan, let's open these rooms. A... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting ready to it. I'm just going to say that when you join a breakout room, a new button will appear on the bottom bar of Zoom saying, um, uh, ask for help. Okay. So if you need anything, just click on that button. We are going to ignore you for the first five minutes so that you figure out for yourselves, just like in a real world scenario, right? Where you are starting a project, you ask for help, no one replies to you because they are busy with other stuff. This is what's going to happen here also. <laughs> but but one, one time we're gonna, we're gonna go and help you, okay? So try to work with your team first, but in last case resort, click on the ask for help, okay? All right, I'm ready to push the button. Let's do it. Have some fun. Welcome back, everyone. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine that eight minutes goes quite so fast? There you are. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, it was a, hopefully it was a fast experience. I'm not like the longest eight minutes of your life. That'd be a shame. Uh, let's go back and look at our... Our zoo. So thank you very much. That's like our first production episode where I've been working to like add animals into our zoo and talk about, well, what is it that we can have? So let's have a look. Let's look at our zoo. So this is like our shared product demo. So who would like to share? What is our zoo? Do we have any animals for our zoo in the first round? Do you mean in the zoo or just like pre-zoo? Yeah, in the zoo. <laughs> so to score points in the zoo. Yeah. You could have like a webcam, I guess, of like this animal is currently in quarantine. Uh, but do we have any animals that have made it all the way into the zoo? No. 
Okay, cool. What's what's our pre-zoo? Or what's our like? What's what can you look forward to? What have we got coming? We have a spectacle bear from South America, which is vulnerable and it needs one acre per animal as an enclosure. But we haven't had a chance to talk to the enclosure team yet. <clears throat> So we've got this speckled bear, spectacled bear. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. What's this animal on the left? It looks a bit too cute. Yeah, it's it's I don't know how to pronounce it. It's <laughs> cu uh, oh, that's quaka. Oh, quaka. Quaka, yeah, okay. the world's smiliest animal. Yes, I should know this. I don't know if anyone was at the Bristol meetup, right? But quaka comes up a really well, it comes up quite a lot. You would like as a as an animal. There we are. Yeah. It is a real animal. Now I remember. Quokka. I even know how to pronounce it, thanks to Bristol. Okay, so we've got two animals in holding pens. We've got ourselves a spectacled bear and a quokka. Okay. Uh, we also have um, to look forward yeah. to a big fine if um, these animals are left in their holding pens for too long. Uh, with my regulatory hat on of animal welfare, it's absolutely yeah. fine to hold them in for one iteration, but if they're still in the holding pens, these endangered animals that need one acre plus land, um, then there's going to be a big fine for the zoo. So um, we need to uh, make sure that those have a good and safe environment um, by the end of the next iteration, please, says the regulatory person. Mm. Uh, what if it is not endangered? Like Kuroka is not endangered, as far as I know. Oh, uh, Then uh, you only get half the fine. <laughs> okay, thanks. And fines are points, by the way, like because points mean prizes in this game. Although there are no prizes except the self satisfaction for uh, trying to get the highest online score, which you know we we should be achievable. Okay, thank you, animal acquisitions team. So we'll do a retrospective in a little bit uh, where we can we can look at making sure that we are effectively, or what can we do to make sure that we're talking to each other. Um, but I can see that there's been some paint lining uh it's like paint markings or chalk markings out in our space so would anyone like to talk about whoops my my mirror board freezing there for a moment anyone from the, perhaps the architecture team like to share their vision for the zoo so yeah so we um uh obviously having a discussion and even though we feel like we need to be in some of the conversations with the acquisitions team and enclosures and even the habitat team, um, there was a good idea of perhaps thinking about some of the, let's say, infrastructure of um, of the zoo. Fair enough. Thank you very much for sharing, Fabio. Um, let's see. So what about um, anything from the... Wow, okay. Wow, cool. Our website is looking pretty cool. Any uh, Anyone want to share from the marketing promotions team what they've got going on here? Yes, I, I don't mind taking that. So essentially our approach here was that without speaking to anyone about who we can, what animals we can have in the zoo, we're just taking wild stabs in the dark. So we're going to need to speak to the animal acquisition team. But we thought that we would just throw some ideas down on paper. Um, capybaras are from South America and they're also very cute. Um, and we also thought why not do some almost postmodern marketing? Um, we, we had a question, why would I want to see the, the capybaras? Why wouldn't you? No idea. Why not ask them? So, you know, kind of tapping into the uh, the next generation and, and asking them rhetorical questions, they can then come and see the capybaras and answer the questions for themselves. Brilliant. Is this webpage live? Um, no, but we can make it live if, if you like. Okay. Probably from like a product management perspective it'd probably be best not to have um uh, a live website talking about animals that you can't actually see in our zoo at the moment um but it, it sounds like that. good yeah. so the yeah, marketing promotions team definitely taking a an initiative and a direction um uh, sounds like there's more to explore there but thank you very much we'll um, get it in quick yeah oh sorry get so was the capybara then <laughs> It's it's a cute it's a cute animal from from South America. Yeah. Um, they are they inhabit South America. I saw one in Bristol Zoo once, um, and that they, yeah they're very they're very very cute little rodents. There's actually friendly. Lot, 
lots of viral videos with capybaras doing some really, really cool things. I mean, a little bit like those, um, forget their names in the Kalahari Desert, um, very... Suricatas? The, the Suricats. Uh, but the, apparently they're very intelligent and they can use, they have sort of little hands and can do various interesting things. And there's even a, a, a comic uh, strip with, you know, capybaras doing things. So, so it's, it's, it's something that people can associate to. Uh, they, they don't know, they might not know what it is, but it's sort of, you know, oh, it's a real animal, you know, this, this kind of thing. So, yeah. That's cool. Good, another marketing selling the selling the uh, the yet to be realized happy bear fantastic thank you so it sounds like for round one no points realized in this round a potential fine to follow in round two and a lot of opportunity so let's move into a retrospective space and what Hafer I think we'll do is let's get a representative perhaps on each team to come and join me in one of the rooms. And we'll talk about some of our decision making and perhaps patterns for cross team collaboration. And everyone else can have a reflection more broadly in this space. You're, you're muted yourself now, there. Sorry. We need one yeah. volunteer from each room uh, architecture and maps. If you do not volunteer in three seconds, I'm going to choose random. So, okay. so this is Sam, my volunteer. Thanks, Sam. You volunteer. Thank you, Sam. Education team, one volunteer in three, two, one. I don't mind doing it. Uh, who said that? Sorry? TK. 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 Hey, nice to see you again, TK. So, retrospective. Uh, Marketing and promotions in three, two, one. Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Premium experience in three, two, one. Stephen. Okay, Stephen. So you are in the retro room. Animal acquisition, Louise. Moisten or Svetlana. Louise. Yeah. Thank you. Louise was faster. Animal enclosures in three, two, one. Who is the retro Mary? Mary. Thank you. Habitat team. Three, two, one, your representative. Okay. Amy? Yeah. Human team. Three, two, one, who is the representative? I'll do that, Zach. Zach. Thank you, Zach. Okay, retrospective room yeah, ready. Is that okay with you, Heather? Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, cool. So the Eight representatives of the teams will go into the retrospective room with Carl, yep. and everyone else is going to stay here with me and Simon, and we're going to talk about what happened, um, probably get some tips from the uh, animal welfare expert also to take into consideration. And how long is it going to last the retro, Mr. Carl Rogers? I think, I think eight minutes. I will probably do two rounds of the game for our time today. That's probably the most effective use. Yeah, stay eight. You muted, but I'm sure you're saying, yep, yeah, cool. So eight minutes of, 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 yep. of retro, is that it? Okay. Yeah, and we'll come back. Cool. Awesome. See you in eight minutes. Um, uh, thank you. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't lose the rooms. Okay, people who are not in the retrospective room, just to keep it simpler, you're going to be invited to the room you were in. You can chat with your team if you want to stay there, or you can come back and leave the room to have a chat with us all. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have to recreate the rooms. It's going to take forever. See you either in eight minutes or see you soon. Okay. I'm calling back the leaders of the retrospective. Welcome back, representatives. Um, I just revealed an information to the people who stayed here. Uh, I'm one of the biggest investors in this zoo, so I really want my money well, well managed. Okay. You're on mute, Mr. Carl Rogers. 
every time i have this like embezzlement plan yeah. but i feel guilty now now knowing it's your money everyone else's was fine but yours specifically i'm gonna have to back out of that okay so if i could summarize back from our we had our we had our representatives from our team we formed two agreements the first is some collective planning before we go into our breakout room so we're proposing so if we have another eight minute time box let's use three of those minutes just to make sure we've got good coordination between all the teams like what animals we're going to bring through and then I guess a few minutes before the end of the um, the time box, we'll also bring people back in to check. So actually, does it make sense? Like maybe the last two minutes, we'll bring people back together. So we have those two agreements. Did anything right. emerge from the whole group conversation that we should account for as well? Uh, well, there was this uh, really clever, uh, clever asynchronous communication system that people develop, which is just dropping sticky notes on the corresponding team's area. So yeah. I don't know if that came up also on the retrospective, mm -hmm. but seems to be like a, a way to overcome the limitation of not being able to reach directly or at any point in time to the, to the other teams. Yeah, very interesting. Cool. Okay, so I think for the also something oh, that I yeah. now just something that I didn't like to uh, I I wasn't really pleasant to to know is that some teams were slacking off waiting for others and my money uh, is very <laughs> dear to me. So okay, we we'll have to get that human resources team involved in uh, perhaps more traditional theory X ways, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so interest of time, I think we should move forward into our second time box. So we'll do another eight minute production episode. We'd like to go and build our zoo. Wow, okay, good. But we'll give three minutes to talk about what do you want to do? So maybe over, well, this is over to you guys now. And maybe the animal acquisitions team sharing what you're planning to do might be a good start. Uh, we had a question actually. Are we sticking with the same requirements like cutest and Australian? That we, yep. we are. So in that case, maybe that kind of makes life easier. So we we're thinking we could uh, maybe stick uh, with a proposed capybara that we all agreed was cute. And the other message that was posted on the channel, uh, the mountain pygmy possum is a good one, really endangered one. But we need to see if we get uh, kind of uh, um, in the in right endangered level for that. If, if we can, so one of those two. And if we could maybe have some ideas of where to place them, that would be good. And actually we also had a question if we're going to have some water in the zoo, because we had some ideas about some, uh, yeah, animals that need to live in water. Yeah, definitely the, the habitats will have water. Okay, thanks. And um, like um, any more uh, guidance around to where to place? There was animals that you already have. Any? Can you give us allocated some, maybe uh, areas in the zoo, and like we will do it as soon as we start the new iteration. We discovered yeah, so... that the cocker is nocturnal, so we need a building um, where we can regulate the darkness hours for them. I don't know if the uh, infrastructure team have, have thought about that. Not yet. We can certainly discuss it, and bring it up. Which um, um, do we know the actual enclosures that are required for uh, the three animals? I can see that the quokka was um, potentially a small enclosure. Looking at the animal enclosures team um, team uh, drawings, but have have there been any discussions regarding the capybara and the? Are we leaving the spectacle bear now? Uh, no, no, let's keep it because it's a, it's it's in, not in dungeon, but whatever, one level down. So it would give us a lot of points. We need to pop to position that somewhere. We're going to do our breakout rooms about 30 seconds, by the way. Okay. The yeah, enclosures don't have to be single use. A capybara would probably play nicely with a quokka. Similar, right. similar environment. They like yep. the water. So the capybara likes to be in water, and the uh, quokka it it needs like uh, like uh, trees and bushes. Uh, and, it's not uh, exactly is the capybara the nocturnal as well? Then? I don't think so. Uh, 
No, capybara is not probably marked down. Okay. Okay, that's our Time's up. planning time box. So I allow you to continue collaborating, but from the from the breakout rooms. Okay, back. Hey, everybody. Oh, right. So let's review the zoo. Okay, so would anyone like me to like to walk me through what what have we got? What animals now exist in our zoo? What's this? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, thank you. So, as you walk into our new fantastic zoo, uh, on the left you will see a fabulous enclosure of quokas. Quokas, quokas, they do come from Australia. They are burnable. Uh, they, are, they like trees and they like darkness. So we're placed in a perfect spot at our zoo under the trees. Very if nice. you keep on going a bit further towards the river, you will find capybaras. They love water, so their enclosure is surrounded by water, so it can be on the grass or in water at any time they wish. They come from Brazil, and they are also, burn, uh, 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 you know what I'm trying to say? Vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. <laughs> Vulnerable, yes. Um, and if you pass the river with a bridge that we just built uh you will get into you'll get a, you'll get to the, the our largest enclosure we have at the moment that houses uh spectacle bears that come from south america and are also uh, vulnerable very cool thank you uh mr anything that you want to add to this from a regulatory perspective? Oh. Uh, well, actually, I was pretty amazed at the uh, the detail in the uh, enclosures. So I'm very happy with uh, the enclosures. Uh, just looking just to quickly see how many um, of the animals are still in the pens that were in there last time. And I'm not seeing any pens, uh, animals that are there for more than one iteration. So that's good. Um, yeah, to be honest, I was, I normally come up with at least a few things to, uh, to frustrate people, <laughs> but, uh, I, I think we're doing really well, actually, to be honest, I think, uh, yeah, four marks. Very good. Yeah. That's definitely worth, uh, 23 points is what I added up as we're going based yeah, on the conservation yeah. status and being able to fulfill our customer needs. Actually, no, sorry. I forgot mm. that some of those animals are also pretty cute. So that would bring us up to a 31 I can work out the scores later. I'll share back the exact scoring, perhaps on LinkedIn for, for time. Awesome. Thank you. So um, premium experiences. Oops, where's our board gone? Premium experiences, anything that you'd like to share? Uh, so we could sure. see the capybar, sorry, not capybar, Quacker um, had a place to live now. So yeah. we decided we'd uh, create, a, and it's also maybe one of the first place people will visit, so we create a feeding experience for the quackers. There you can there see go. our poster oh. with a picture of a quacker being fed. We thought it was slightly less scary than feeding a bear. Um, so here we've got <laughs> our poster, quackers feeding experience. Why not upgrade your quacker experience by feeding them? Um, actually, and then that's that's a draft, that's a version 0.0 of our um, poster because the version one we've sent to marketing and i think if you scroll up you'll see it on the website oh very cool so, is our website live by live i mean like you just say yes and it's fine yes <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah you see it's 30 minutes experience 15 pounds per person or 40 for a family of four fantastic i'm liking Thank those you. numbers i'm liking those numbers yeah <laughs> yes mr investor is doing well Thank you. We'll, we'll move into reflections in a moment for our last 10 minutes together, but I would just love to see, looks like our education team have been busy building some fantastic signs as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, I thank can you. see they are still busy, still building. Yeah. That's against the rules. I'm going to be yeah. fined by, by the union and the syndicate, people working extra hours. <laughs> so that, well, unfortunately, we've got a, a HR uh, team that's found a, a good loophole around that, I'm sure um mm -hmm. excellent okay cool so we have 10 minutes well nine minutes left together 
So I think at this time it would be good just to debrief and reflect on our experiences so far. Um, often mm-hmm. we play free rounds, but I think the online and our first like, run it online probably makes sense to to stop at two. Mm-hmm. So I can stop. definitely and and since um, we may we may have also people who either need to leave or cannot all speak at the same time. In the mural board, you can find on the outline a section called feedback. And then you have three areas to give feedback. Either you really enjoyed or things that you really enjoyed and you can post there. Things that were not not so sure how, how, they, how they are or feel right now and things you, you haven't enjoyed much. So while people are doing this, yeah. Share us your your feedback and voice or retrospect about what did you learn playing this game or even what could you learn or what people in your organization could learn with a game like this. So I thought it was a great exercise. Um, I'll tell you, initially, I was not so sure this was going to work well online. Um, it works. It works pretty well online. Kudos for that. Um, and the other thing I'll say is that if you ever had any doubt about breaking dependencies, you certainly have less doubt now. Yeah. <laughs> I was really impressed when animals started being taken from us because we were just trying to work it out how to pass it across. And it was like, I really appreciate that proactive approach, actually, getting animals and taking them into correct places. That was teamwork <laughs> yeah very cool that feels nice doesn't it yeah thank you for that Svetlana what else or other practical usages either for for this game or games that you can build yourself the, the power of gaming and learning through play How long does it, does it take ages to set up? Sorry, because it's it's such a great game, but that's I guess yeah. No. Well we have um the template is available on Mural. I have one on Miro. Happy to share mm-hmm. as well. So that's done. The rules are available. Like the, there's a guide that you can download. We have to add the link to the I guess like in our post LinkedIn meetup comments, we'll put a, a guide. So if you do want to go run mm-hmm. it in person or online, we'll give you the resources. I bet it's fantastic um, doing on-site experience. Yes, because you get all of the energy. We're going to feel like some of the energy here, right, as well, but you're all contained in a room. You can build in things like mm. the like motion and like and talk about like, different wastes that might exist in our organization. Like we talked about some of like the, the, the dependencies that exist in our functional teams, mm-hmm. like the movement between teams, where you can you can map all of that stuff out in a physical space as well. Yeah, yeah. Even the 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 centralization of action that needs to happen on online, like for example, me assigning you to all your rooms, that took quite considerable time. Um, if we are in the same room, this happens naturally because people just move around. Or we could open the rooms and let you choose which room would you like to join. So there are things that the tools um, may help. Uh, and then it's just a problem of the the user not knowing how to to use the feature. So exploring the online tools you you have to to their fullest potential may also increase the experience of the online world. And I think the greatest challenge um, I find in um, when we've got more than one team or multiple teams collaborating to deliver is who is um, got the big picture. Who mm-hmm. would take the ownership of bringing the teams? Although we would say in, in um, talk about the self-organized teams working together, proactively reaching out, but uh, who would still be owning, delivering the whole piece? Um, so that still, um, how, how do we bring that challenge out and how do we talk about it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
because here yeah. I, I think as as a game organizer you can organize like um carl organized a retro so in the real world who's that one person who's trying to bring or we constantly talking about because this is one of those challenges i i encounter um in every organization where you're talking bringing about you can teach coach mentor around collaboration but end of the day organizations always come back and say who's that one person who can be accountable for facilitating everybody to come together um so yeah. that's that's still kind of something to explore i guess definitely dutifully noted um the the game was was designed with more of the dynamics and the mechanics of the cross team uh, collaboration but this not only strategy but also orchestration perspective uh, maybe something to be added in a, at a later round uh, if mm. we had more time to run or even devising a different game to to actually talk about this this kind of stuff zach do you want to say something yeah, so what you find in these situations is that there's three different perspectives going in. There's the strategic, there's the managerial aspect, and then there's the people that actually do the work, the makers. Um, what you could use is a triune brain theory, where you, Rafa, as the investor, are like the shark or the wizard brain. And then you've got the managers who are trying to get the teams to work together, um, who are more caring, more mumsy, but more... Caring. And then you've got the people doing the work who mm -hmm. we would look to see bringing in from events organization, hospitality, education, which is a different type of resource than we're used to meeting in IT, which is usually introverted, uh, likes to get things done, doesn't like to be interrupted, likes to, to bang it on through. So there's mm -hmm. different um, areas. I'm not it was fun working in the zoo, um, mm. and it was, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that it transfers across to um, IT teams as I know them. But then I'm used mm -hmm. to working in fairly male-oriented teams um, in financial sectors. But I do, mm -hmm. I do think that you're on to something with the gaming. Uh, mm -hmm. The next question mm -hmm. would be, um, can you make it a computerized game <laughs> and therefore yeah. have people playing with the machine performing all the different characters? Yeah, interesting. I just, uh, well, I said, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to, to call out to, to, to your, your challenge and Zach and, and throw it back to you because I, I believe that every organization and every group of people have unique set of of challenges and and what we try to showcase here is one of the game master carl rogers expertise it's not only to to build those games but also teach you or anyone else here how to build games that are more applicable to your reality so how can you take the constraints and the characteristics of your really specific kind of world and people in that world and build a game that can transfer those big challenges and instead of you uh, showcasing or telling those challenges build a game that will cover this kind of of things sure um i'll come back immediately with a response which is mm -hmm. in the uk there are 30,000 STEM ambassadors. We work with school children. Over the last two years, the number of school children wanting to work with games has grown exponentially. Every year there's a competition. Last year, the competition was describe how STEM, science, technology, engineering, maths works as you see it. And some of the games that these kids were producing were quite incredible from the ones that were showing the teenage angst of disappearing through a hole in the bedroom floor um, because of AI to other people that were being recruited by NASA to build a space rocket, collect all the materials, put them together 
get the code, it was a th most it was like coding like painted by numbers that they came up with with questions and answers. Um I'll DM you online and send you some links that you can have a look at. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. Definitely. Connection. Thank you for that. No, thank you. It's been an excellent evening, gentlemen. Yeah, mm -hmm. And everybody else. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you all. Yeah. And that's thank probably you. a good segue into our closing remarks, I guess. Exactly. Thank you very much yes. from me. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much for everybody who has you know, given time, bringing your energy, enthusiasm, and willingness to experiment with us. Very much appreciated. I hope you took some valuable insights away from this as well. I'm sure we can share a bit of a debrief on ourselves as well. So check it out on LinkedIn or a Meetup comments. Um, and we'd love to run another one. And if anyone is in London, 28th of November next Tuesday, come and play a game in person, the unwinnable game, a psychologically unsafe game of failing agile transformations. Hope you all have a yes. wonderful, wonderful evening. Yes, on the call to action section on on Miro, you have the link to register for the meetup. You can you just double click here this picture and it will open on your browser tab. Um, who, someone asked me about uh, Alexander. You asked me about the effects I'm using. Is it from Zoom? No, it's not Zoom. It's something called OBS Studio. If you want to know more, there is this uh, e-course that I built that kind of like gives you the 101 basics of OBS and also how to sound and look better online. Here, Carl is showing how he used to look and yeah. sound. This is it. Like it started off like this. Then thanks to Hafa, I'm a bit more like this. I can even add in the yeah, funky so. voices if I need to, right? <laughs> exactly. So, and if you want to... Uh, again, learn how to design games. Uh, uh, in in bringing your reality to the to the context that you are in and creating the simulation where people can learn from that reality, then you have this um, designing agile games for accelerator learning course that is going to happen on the eighth and 9th of February. You can double click on this yellow. A rectangle with the lamp on it and it will take you to the registration page to it. Mr. Animal Welfare Regulator Officer, anything you would like to add for us closing? Uh, only just to amplify the thanks of uh, and again the power of community of just to come together and play some crazy awesome game um, together. I mean how awesome is that? Thank you for putting this on and um, and coming up with something and, and then be willing to put that out there. And thank you, everybody, for turning up and making it worthwhile and making it work. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Simon. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everyone. See Hope you to see you in the future, either on another meetup in one of our courses or here in Portugal. If you ever come here, let me know. We're going to go surfing or drinking some port wine or just eating pastel di nata, whatever you prefer, okay? Bacalhau too. I don't eat it, but I can uh, accompany you, okay? <laughs>